Hello everyone, welcome back here to the channel Stapa Olho Azul and Super Academico. And today we're going to find out the big secret. Will sociology become a real science or will be just social philosophy? That's the question that in this chapter of New Rules of Sociological Methods by Anthony Giddens from our playlist here, number 10, episode 10 today well uh, this is a rhetorical question uh, it's not uh, there's not a, an answer that satisfies this question because social science and uh, in, in general are problematic because they just appear not to be science as as natural or exact science but uh, this is just a uh, like a a hint, né? just like a, a bait for you to be to the end until the end of the video. So let's go and don't forget to subscribe to both channels and thank you for watching this playlist. Uh, we have been, uh, we have uh, a lot of people watching this, these videos, uh, surprisingly. Some videos have more than 10, no, than, than 100 views. So let's go. Don't forget to subscribe to the channels, give the like, and please comment. Leave, uh, give comments and share the video. Okay, uh, the chapter four is the the last chapter before the conclusion. It's called the form of explanatory accounts. Form of explanatory accounts. He begins by comparing the work of Augusto Conte and Karl Marx. He says. In the writings of Kant and Marx alike, the science of social life was to complete the freeing of the human spirit from religious dogmas and customary unexamined beliefs. So uh, it means that this, these two thinkers from the 1900s, no, no, for the 1800s, uh, 19th century, they both believe that uh, science should help the, the human being to achieve the superation of these dogmas, these beliefs that are not accountable, that are not verified. The phenomenological philosophers have sought the effect to affect a critic of natural science, science by arguing that it claims to knowledge are secondary to and depended upon ontological premises of the natural attitude. So it means that it's part of our being, of our way of being, to, to ask things in this natural way, like uh, questioning things. But uh, the critic of phenomenolo phenomenology, phenomenology, in this time, in the, the end of the 19th century uh, it's placed in the way that uh, science was, was becoming so so influenced that uh, they need some kind of a, of break some kind of a, a thing a, 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 a knowledge that says wait uh, the, the human spirit still can make questions and not everything is answered yet until today both phenomenology and linguistic philosophy, linguistic philosophy, culminate in a critic of social science. So, social science, sociology began um, wanting to have the same status of natural sciences. Of course, we we cannot achieve that because uh, the the nature of the objects is different, as we said in the. Uh, former videos of social uh, of sociology are bound to be no the findings of sociology are bound to be unremarkable since they cannot do more than redescribe what we must already know as participants in social life so the conclusion should be that sociologists seem unnecessary and pretentious yes we are really unnecessary pretensions but without us will not be uh, there will not be uh, the perception 
of the problems that today we have for example why today this day 2023 we still have the same kind of economic social problems that were a problem in the 19th, 19th century uh, why why it, it shouldn't happen because the technology has advanced so much that we should have surpassed that okay so here we are to question that um, Conte in positive so philosophy in sociology influence the sociology as a whole of course is he was the one that gave the name sociology Dierkheim's rules of sociological methods from uh, from from whom uh, Anthony Giddens takes this reformulation of the title uh, as we already spoke that in former videos bold expression of such a view the object of sociology is to construct theories about human conduct inductively on the basis of prior observations about the conducts so as uh, social researchers we must observe uh, particle things and uh, small things and then formulate a theory in an inductive base but scientific theories are hypothetical deductive systems the creation of theories involves several levels of conceptual differentiation at the highest level abstract postulates which cannot to be given a precise definition in terms of their empirical context but only in terms of their logical relations with the other postulates so it means that uh, sociology uh, goes in the the different direction it formulates the theories from the experience base from the empirical base but the the scientific theories uh, the, the, the uh, whole theories they take this hypothetical situations and formulate a, a whole theory that embraces everything that's why it's hypothetical dedu deductive and in that way sociology could not could never be that uh, we, could not, we could never have a sociological law for example like the the the, the gravity law or or even a, a, a biological a biological theory that's that stands something about uh, transformation of life and in sociology we cannot have this kind of uh, uh, this this form of theory so uh, then he, he comes to the uh, most uh, most famous I think epistemologists uh, about the, the theory of knowledge in the 20th century uh, uh, Karl Popper and Thomas Kuhn. Thomas Kuhn. Karl Popper was British, I think, or I think was British, and Thomas Kuhn was American. Well, Popper and Kuhn, Kuhn, not Kuhn, Kuhn, with you. And they say things that are complementary in a way that uh, help us to understand the way that the knowledge are formulated and the structure of scientific revolutions that's the the book from thomas Kuhn. major epistemological problems that in large part are shared by the natural and social sciences that means uh, he formulates that the communities of researchers uh, faces the same kind of problems in the epistemological level in the level of the formulation of knowledge not on, on the different subjects no? it's not like uh, if you study the the particles in the sun we uh, you will have the same kind of a problem the same kind of a question about how to formulate the theory how to formulate the the uh, the, the hypothesis that you have so the community of other researchers can uh, can read and evaluate that 
the same in the same way that a uh, 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 researcher uh, dealing with the I don't know the 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 people that live in the in the refugees camps these days uh, running away from war they 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 are just study people studying people but they have the same problems of formulating the 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 theory formulating the hypothesis the testing the methodology is different of course but the epistemological questions are the same that's what he's saying he says can can says according to uh, Anthony Giddens Kant's formulation of normal science suggests that the development of science outside of certain revolutionary phases of change depends upon a suspicion of critical reason. The taking for granted of a set of epistemological propositions harder than upon the imminent permanent revolution of critical reason, which is at the heart of Popper's philosophy of science. That's why I said that they, they have complementary systems. Okay, Popper will say that uh, the theories of science need to be tested in a way uh, in a way that the researcher must question its validity, try to falsify the theory. So it reassures the theory since the, the, the test of negativity, the test of falsification, uh, fails. So uh, for that, uh, when it fails, it begins uh, the need for a new kind of paradigm, uh, a new, new, new kind of uh, normal science, you know, a revolutionary science that creates a new normal science. That's uh, why the change of paradigms that are speaking spoken by comes works very well complementing the, the falsification theory and yeah, the falsification method method I don't know what was the method yeah, it's, it's all a logical thing that's why uh, in the way as if, if you didn't see the other videos please watch the other videos or read the book uh, you can do both I don't know but uh, in this this way the the uh, the, it's all a language problem. It's all a matter of communication, uh, communicating to others what you note, what you discover, what you think you discover about some subject, and and testing that, uh, and trying to falsify that in a logical way. And so, in a way, everything kind of. Uh, zooms uh, kind of uh, get together with the logical and the language. Uh, falsification in popular philosophy, I already said that. Western science and religion of magical practice are, are not scientific in a way, <laughs> of course, because they are not tested, they are not falsified. It's a beliefs system. Well, in a way, Western science is also a belief system. Uh, he, he quotes the, the theory of Evans Preacher, the, the, the anthropologist Evans Preacher, about his research uh, with the Zen people um, in North America. That's uh, uh, a research about the, the way that magic works in that society. And it's validated by the belief that are shared so the community is what establish what is real or what's not real then he comes to the topic of science or not science non-science yeah? uh, he, he establishes four problems i don't know i'll be able to develop this in this video is already 40 minutes but i'll try one how science is to be differentiated from non-science, the grounding of science epistemologically. Okay, what is base? What what grounds science in an epistemological way? The significance of falsification as a principle of science, as Popper says. 
the mediation of paradigms within the context of the development of science. So uh, these four problems and uh, the, the, the what motivates is how how you differentiate what is science, what's not science, what what gives ground to science in a epistemological way, what uh, what the, the importance né, of falsification as a, as a way to assure that the, the theory is still valid because it wasn't falsified. And if it is fa falsified, uh, it, it's possible for the community, community to develop a new theory. And finally, the, the, the transitions of paradigms to develop the science, to make the science uh, go ahead né? Uh, in a progress, progressive way. Uh, he says, scientists and sorcerers seem to parallel, of course, <laughs> in, a, in a way, the different culture differences, Western science, religions are magical. Ah, that's why he, he quotes the, the, Zen t the Zen research from Evans Preacher. Because in the, the, the discoverings and the findings of Evans Preacher, he says that uh, the sorcerer, né, the, the, the shaman of the Zen people, works in a way that's very similar to the scientists. Theories are formulated and observations are made. Free debates and critical testing is the basis of what is science. Well, that's why the, the debates for the video in the beginning was, let's see if sociology is really a science. Doctrinal disputes certainly occur for frequently. Basis of the critical reception of documented observations. This central legitimating feature of science often becomes dogma. Of course, uh, uh, it's, it's a system of belief. Science is a system of belief. So it produces his beliefs and maybe become dogmas in a way that are very similar to, to religion. But uh, defending science as I am here uh, science is possible to break down dogmas by other theories, other paradigms. That one example in social science is very classical. Until the beginning of the 20th century, uh, was belief that evolution was a thing in social science, in a way that uh, similar to the uh, to to biology, né? to the, the findings of Charles Darwin. And what we discovered as a community of, of science, of social science, is that uh, the societies are not classified by uh, a way that is similar to evolution of the animals. It cannot be done. Right? It doesn't make sense to construct some kind of classification of evolution from one people, né, one, one culture that is primitive, other that is civilized and so on, uh, that's wrong. That, uh, that was the belief in the 19th century in social science and in the beginning of the 20th century it, that was discarded. It was part of history. We, we study that as part of history, but we don't believe that anymore. Uh, we social science, I believe many people believe this kind of crap about different, different uh, stages of evolution between people. The patient's observation of happenings in the world's disclosed regularities which having been verified by repeated empirical tests are then stated as universal laws. That's happen, that happens in social science. In nature, natural sciences and exact sciences. Popper again, potential of falsification. And again, uh, if you have the potential of falsify a theory, it probably is some kind of science. So the theories in sociology are all uh, possible of being falsified. So it, it, it's, it, we can assume that sociology is a science because of that. 
if becomes some kind of a dogma, some kind of a law that's not possible to be argued, eh, to be put in doubt, so you have something else, not science, not a science. For example, in sociology, we have some kind of beliefs about the, the uh, Marx, Karl Marx theories that are classical. When someone is uh, caught in a way that the belief, the belief in the Karl Marx theories are so true that becomes ide an ideology and a political statement and maybe some kind of extremes, extremes, me, <laughs> extreme thing. Sorry, uh, that is not science anymore. And for science, it's need to be, it's need to be possible to be questioned. Uh, same thing happens with uh, psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis, you cannot argue with psychoanalysis because it becomes part of the, the all psychoanalysis uh, analysis, analysis of you as someone that is are saying something against psychoanalysis. So it's not possible to falsify, so it's not science. It's something else. It's not lose the validation, uh, it's valid contribution, but it's not science. Uh, there's an item here about paradigms. I already explained what's what are paradigms, uh, they are uh, clusters of ideas that are uh, for if paradigms are closed systems of epistemological premises which succeed each other by processes of revolutionary change, how is anyone to be able to rationally, rationally to adjudge one paradigm against another. That's the, 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 the rule of community. The structure of social of scientific revolution, so the, the work of Kant, uh, in that work exaggerates the internal unity of paradigms, of course. And uh, uh, Thomas Kuhn, he believed what he was writing. Uh, unexamined assumptions assumptions shared by communities of scientists well if a community for example if a community have uh, influence political influence power influence but someone by someone that have some kind of belief in what is is being researched what is being said of course the this influence will affect the way that community accepts the paradigm so it, the paradigm is not uh, something that are uh, detached from the people beliefs and uh, the person beliefs. Uh, one historical, uh, historical example in, in communist China, uh, until 1976, the leader of the, the, the people, uh, the China people, Chinese people, was Mao Zedong, and he carried out some beliefs about how to conduct the country. When he passed, the, the new leader, uh, Xi Jinping, I think is that, I don't know, I'm not sure, sorry. But the, the, the leader that followed, he, he believed in, in, in other things. He, 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 think, he thought that the China people, né, China, should take another direction economically speaking so the paradigm change the, the country is still communist is still uh, concentrated power né, one, one party but the way the economy was driven was different because the leadership changed the matters at issue between rival schools are normally rooted in long-standing ontological epistemolog and epistemological differences, which appear and reappear in both the history of philosophy and that of natural science. I, I think it's pretty obvious that. I wrote something here. Let's see if I can read. The paradigm is influenced by outside factor and by other paradigms. 
Yes, yes of course. Uh, I think uh, one example uh, is the influence of relativity, the, the uh, Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, the influence of that, that in physics, in other kind of uh, science and knowledge during the 20th century, 21st century to this day. There's more things, relativism, relativism and hermeneutic analysis, we already talked about hermeneutics. Hermeneutic analysis demands a respect uh, for the authenticity of medi mediated, mediated frames of meaning. This is the necessary avenue for understanding other forms of life, that is, generating descriptions of them that are potentially available f to those who have not directly participated in them. So uh, it's like uh, the ability of the anthropologist to describe the culture of, uh, of a people, né? of a different kind of people. And it's possible for other people né? to understand without being in the same place. So uh, this, is, this is basically the hermeneutical work when you translate something that you saw to other people that didn't see the, the same thing. Uh, accept the possibility that the others may be right too. Uh, it's a comment that I made here. Yeah. So we must accept the possibility that the others may be right too. Maybe right. Sociology, unlike natural sciences, stands in the subject subject relation to its field of study. Yes not subject to object I read, where uh, we already said that it's a very common thing in sociology but that's not take uh, uh, the, the the sociology in a, in a weaker way and that's our strength i think also in other social sciences like psychology anthropology and political science <coughs> Formal logic does not deal in metaphor, uh, irony, sarcasm. Uh, I'm, I remember this comment. He says that uh, sometimes when we just use logical language, we lose the understanding of things, subtle, subtle things like irony and sarcasm. sarcasm. To become acquainted with a new paradigm is to grasp a new frame of meaning. Yeah, we have to accept that. I promise I'm finished. An anthropologist who visits an alien culture, alien, does not, with a depending, no, deepening knowledge of that culture, sacrifice her or his origin, original identity. Uh, the specific task of anthropology, indeed, is that of mediating the description of the one in the terms of the other. We already said that the hermeneutical efforts of the anthropologists, all types of social and historical research demands communication in some sense with the persons or collectivities that are true, that they are the subject matter of the research. In my case, for example, I have to live, uh, live not live, I have to live with uh, i don't know how to explain it. i have to be with people that were not my people during the my during my field work and it was it was okay it wasn't uh, uh, alien culture but it was different from my common ground every competent so competent social actor is herself or himself a social theorist Okay, that's uh, uh, where I said that when we talk about the uh, uh, ethnomethodology. In ethnomethodology is basically that the, the acceptance that the, the common, uh, the lay people, the common people, are able to speak, theorize about their own lives. And finally, before the conclusion, I think I. I managed to finish, but before the conclusion, self-influencing observations of predications represent one aspect of 
a much more far-reaching phenomenon in sociology than its true of nature sciences. So in conclusion, some new rules of sociological methods. Orthodox functionalism, as represented most prominently, mm, most strongly by Durkheim and later by Parsons, does embody an attempt to connect intentional action and institutional, institutional analysis via the theorem that the moral values upon which social solidarity rests also appear as motivating elements in personality. So this is the traditional way of thinking of functionalism. The production of society is brought up about by the act active a uh, constituting skills of its members. The structure appears as both condition and consequence of the production of interaction. So when we interact with others, we are producing the structure that we live in. That's basically what he's saying. Sociology is not concerned with the pre-given universe, universe of objects, but with one which is constituted or produced by the active doings of subjects. That's us, uh, what we produce in society. And that's the end of the book. So we finally finished this book, this collection of videos. I hope you have enjoyed. This final video was very long, 30 minutes. If you are tired, please watch in two parts. But I will <laughs> not divide the video in two parts. I hope you have reached here the end. And hope you enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, comment, share, and please help the channels, both channels, to grow. See you next time with another, another topic. Bye bye.